If you're watching Hardcore Collective. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Alright, can you see your names and uh, what band you play in? Okay, uh, Dan Wills, playing Fabulous. Alex Ross and Cobra. And um, what got the band started? Uh, I wanted to do a band in 2004 when we started. I, did, I didn't, wasn't playing any bands at the time really. And I wanted to do a band with Dan singing again. And me, Dan, me, and Nick used to play in this band called Magnus in Middle School. And uh, we wanted to start a band that was doing all the influences that we had. The Cobra had like Life Bagging, Biohazard, Chromags. Uh, all the stuff like infusing because nobody was really doing that when we first started. So pretty much that. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys um, recall what got you into hardcore and what was like the first show you guys went to individually that knowing it was a hardcore show? Um. Well, I guess some of the first shows I went to, I had an older brother that took me to uh, like these metal concerts. Not metal concerts, but they had these metal, these battle of the bands in my at this like roller skating rink in my town when I was like 13 years old. And you have to watch me. And uh, I did that with him a few times, and I ended up seeing a few like uh, like crossover bands. Um, that you know, I like bands like DRI and like Misfits, I guess you know, most metalheads did, but. Uh, um, so with one band covered like uh, Biohazard and one band covered like Ignacio Front, and, uh, I went to a record store with my brother and asked the dude there who these bands were and he handed me Ignacio Front, Victim and Pain LP and um, I guess that was the first time I kind of heard what hardcore it was and from there I just met some kids at school and uh, I got a flyer for a show in the area when I was like 14 and went to the show and it was just it wasn't metal, it wasn't anything I've heard before, it was just, it was good, I loved it, I fell in love with it. I was 14 or 15, I was a freshman in high school, like I had gone to like big things, like concerts, like punk bands and playing stuff, like the first show, Dan actually played it, it was, uh, that band Magnus played, I wasn't in it at the time obviously, but uh, a bunch of other bands played, and what was that? Like, top of the slope? Top of the slope thing, like oh, big yeah, wave. Was good, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, really like, the first, like I was into like punk bands and like a couple like heavier yeah. bands, but like, I don't know how, like, one of like the first couple bands I heard was like Minor Threat and Warzone. And her Magnus covered, uh, I don't want to hear it. And I was like, I was just like hooked. So. And that was, what was it, 96, 97, something like that? I think that was 97. Back in the day. And that was some of these, like, yeah, and that was, <laughs> so yeah, like, Nick wasn't in the band either at that point, Nick wasn't in Magnus yet, and Nick, I remember, like, watching, like, Nick, like, like, moshing and singing along and stuff like that, and, like, it was, so yeah, Dan is pretty directly responsible for <laughs> it. You know, You're welcome! Like, thanks. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> yeah, so, it, we both come from a really small town where, like, everybody knew each other and stuff like that, and, Dan's 40 years old? I'm 34 now. Hmm? So when I was like younger, like you know, 14, 15, something like that, like him and like a bunch of other guys, like Nick, uh, like our friend Bob, and uh, tons of like older dudes, like really like took everybody under their wing and just like showed you like just like like not like like this band, but it was like check this band out and. He gave you the scoop on things. It, it, yeah. yeah, it was like, it was like check all these. It was like, and the thing about that I think has made Wilkes Barre such a cool place to be from is that it was never like this band. It was always like check all these bands out. Mm -hmm. Like even if like you didn't like a band, you were like, yo, I'm not in this band, but you might like it. Check this out. And you know, it was, like, I remember Dan one day gave me a Black Train Jack CD, a Life of Agony CD, everything was like that tape, and. <laughs> Uh, like an instead tape or something like that. Like three nice. bands at a time, nothing I liked whatsoever. Yeah. And like I liked that it was, you know, it was just how it was. And so it was him and like all these older guys. Like, it was their fault. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> and what are some of the influences on Cold World and what made you guys want to do like a hip hop hardcore kind of thing? Well, we have to credit this Nick for that. Nick, uh, our drummer. I mean, yeah, Nick, he was, Nick's been, I guess, in the hip hop since he was a little kid. 
Um, he's also a DJ and just oh, music, sick. Music. He's the one that does all the samples and like playing scratch and all that stuff. It's oh, really? That's all awesome. Fun. Like when Alex and when Alex and Nick kind of had the idea to do Cold World, um, I remember Nick saying, "Oh yeah, I have this scratch part I want to put in the song Cold World," and I think all of us were just like, "Nah, it's." We don't want to sound like Lucas, something <laughs> weird like that. And Nick was like, "No, no, no, it's gonna be good." And when we heard like the rough demo, him and Alex got together, you know, recorded the song roughly. And Nick put the scratch board in there. And it just fit perfectly, and it sounded really good. And um, just from there, uh, it just grew from there. I mean, that first record only had that one sample on it, and then the Ice Cream Sugar came out, and Nick just went. Uh, not too Nick, crazy on that. Not too crazy, crazy, but there was still more like samples and more stuff Nick was doing. We got more comfortable. And then the next, you know, and then as Nick got more comfortable putting things in, it's just everything just progressing. I mean, now I'm mean, dedicated. I think Nick has a little something to do with every song. And, you know, we're really trying to, you know, especially now, and, and Nick, you know, to play all the music. Uh, uh, we stuff for a lot. We're the price on it too. <laughs> We can price line it too, so we might do a price of one. We want to, we want to offer it. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Whatever, do 40% of what it usually is. Or 60, 40% off what it usually is. <laughs> Ruining Ruin the interview, Alex. Uh, yeah, well, and like as like you said, like as we got more comfortable with that, we got yeah. more comfortable throwing like our other influences. Like, Start flowing better. Yeah, yeah, with everything. Like that's how everything. Even with Alex singing, like when yeah. the idea came up for Alex. And, Try to sing parts. We obviously it was a big powerhouse of influence with like the yeah. yeah. kind of vocals. And you know, the first time Alex did it, it was like, wow, this is, it's worked. It's worked for us. So we, you know, we try. You know, even when we're writing songs, a lot of more incorporated where both of us were singing and not just me. Because mm -hmm. um, it sounded good. It was different. It was, it was just different what was going on at the time. And it wasn't even about us even wanting to do something different. We were just having fun with it. Like yeah, I love the music we write and. Even if only three kids a night came out to see us ever, like I still love the music we write, you know. And yeah, it's just fun for us. Yeah, because honestly, I've heard uh, other bands trying to attempt at that, but you guys, you guys kill it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard anything better. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, upcoming album you guys gonna be putting out? Uh, all the music's recorded. Uh, I did vocals for one song. There's a song I sing the whole thing, I do vocals for it, and it was literally the hardest thing on music I've ever done in my life because it hurt to do. Uh, <laughs> it's like a little high in my range. Um, and then. Rune, uh, he's been in the band now for a couple years. Um, the other records, like pretty much all the writing and music are really Alex and Nick, but this last yeah. record. Haroon's had a big part in writing a lot of the songs and having a big influence, which gives it a, a little bit different sound than what we had before, and it's good. I, I think a lot of the songs like it's, it's a little bit different. Like, <laughs> it's, it's still cold roll, but there's a little different sound there that yeah. Haroon has brought it's to the like, table. Like a little more like fresh here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Progression. So it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's it's good. I, I like it. Those Here's, songs, but there's also a record. On yeah. The so it's you know, and uh, we wrote, we recorded. Most of the music before I moved to England in the, in the summer, so I got to finish up the vocals probably over there. Um, it's just all of us are so busy with our lives; it's just hard for us to. We're doing that studio for William. Oh yeah, yeah. Best, which is good too. Best studio, best producer. And I mean, what did you put out in the past year? Like the Naysayer record. What did Naysayer Dan Path? Uh, Gypsy yeah. title fight, blacklisted. Yeah. Um, and from that water for you, Mongo is there right now. Uh, he, I mean, he the, yeah. it's just like the best studio. He's the best. He makes everything sound incredible. So, yeah. it's, it's, we have we have like rough mixes, like not even rough mixes, just like straight from the board stuff, like for us to have like on our iPods. And it's the best sounding thing yeah. we've ever done. It sounds so cool. <laughs> That's awesome to hear. Do you guys got any uh, any shout outs you want to throw out before we end this? Uh, shout out to Dan. <laughs> for flying to each other uh, for flying to um, and Sarah Moe for having us yeah. having us come out I mean, we don't really if anybody everybody's oh thank you for playing thank you for coming out we've seen a long time really you should be thanking Sarah Moe if it wasn't for them yeah. we wouldn't be playing these two days so yeah. I don't yeah. get to see those guys ever it's great to see them I don't even get to see Haruna and Nick live in Philly I never get to see them like <laughs> I just I mean, and I were talking before we came out here like I'm just like to hang out with you and I'm like 
he lives in Philly, I live in Harrisburg now, it's like an hour and a half apart, and I'm like, yes, we're flying to California, yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem like two months. <laughs> I, I, this is the first time we get to see bands since October. Yeah, since uh, it's stage you know, too. So, I mean, it's just, it's good too, because those guys, it, it's, it, I mean, we can't thank them enough. Like, yeah. anybody who's ever done anything before. Yeah, we have a lot of, uh, just because of our schedules, I mean, we have, we have four kids, three kids really young. Um, I live in England now, Alex is in law school, <laughs> Stace lives in Arizona, I mean, everyone just moved to Florida, he's in Detroit before, Nick's in Philadelphia. Yeah. So even over the past four or five years, we've got a lot of our friends that just they go put to shows together on the West Coast, they're in the and they really, you know, get us together and fly us out, and we can't thank everybody enough for yeah. making that happen for us, you know? Um, show our appreciation to everybody that's up this out. Just, I can't, I mean, it's, it's endless. I don't know, yeah, literally. <laughs> Joe Harper has been great to us over the past couple of years. Uh, Foster. Foster was Foster. down in, in Richmond. David Foster. Uh, Foster. 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 Alex Port, yeah, and Justice uh, Scott. He did uh, yeah, a weekend for us in Germany a couple years ago, and he's doing our European tour now. All the Justice guys powered records like in Europe. And, um, this guy told me how uh, he's taking us out to Japan. And, uh, it's just been kind of surreal that we've been a band for so long, and we can still do these things yeah. because of these people, because of people in our core. And, you know, I just got friends. You know, like, it's, just fun to it's not like some booking agency making tons of money off of us. It's yeah. like, you know, we're not making anything. It's, it's our friends. If everyone's making yeah. money, our friends are. We this are. is so awesome about it. it's, it's community. Yeah. 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 Ceremonies are losing a lot of money. Nah, nah. They're not, <laughs> not, I mean, they're, they're not. Like, I mean, like, oh, yeah. these shows were sold out with ours. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, they could have had anything. They could have had ceremony. Yeah. Just nothing but local bands play. And. They just want to do it because like those are like super good friends. That's right. And, you know what I mean? Like that's just so great. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> well, thank you guys for doing this interview. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Yeah, Can you. you guys both say uh, you're watching Hardcore Collective? Same time. Or? Same time. One, two. <laughs> One, two, three. You're watching Hardcore Collective. <laughs>